So, thank you all for being here. You must be the diehards of today because it's the last session of today. Um, so, this presentation is uh, also about open educational resources. Uh, that might not be a surprise. Uh, however, I'm sure that we all agree that open education uh, resource is an important subject. Um, I would like to talk about this subject from, from a more practical framework, so uh, to answer or provide a solution uh, for the what's in it for me questions that m so many teachers of, of us have. Um, so my name is uh, Schwarz Kaiser. I'm here with my colleague uh, Kees van Gent, who's sitting over there. Um, I'm a project leader at the University Library of the Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam. Uh, this is not the Free University of Amsterdam, that's something completely different. Um, and uh, we are both working at the Department of Educational Support. Um, as a university library, we think it's our main goal to save, structure and share open educational materials. Because I think teachers know best um, what's good for, for, their, uh, for their students. And for us, the open educational materials, we want to save, structure and share. Uh, so therefore, when we started the project about two years ago about open educational resources, together with the Dutch institution SURF, um, we saw it as our job to once again save, structure and share the open uh, educational materials. And during the last few years, a lot of teachers, uh, especially during the COVID pandemic, created a lot of videos, you created a lot of own materials, assignments and literature, and they all have those materials on different places. For example, the videos are stored in video management systems. Uh, their own materials are mostly stored on personal drives. While their, um, for example, assignments are, st are, are placed on learning management systems. And of course, as a library, we hold many of the literature. Combining all these uh, materials becomes rather chaotic. Therefore, we came up with a solution. We, create, cre so, sorry. we created these learning uh, paths together with education programs. Um, and these learning paths are created in Excel and can be easily converted into a PDF. So therefore, it's really easy to create uh, and you don't need any other investments or applications. As you can see, we have an academic core. You can see it's the orange one on the top left uh, where you have some uh, various courses. Uh, and as you can see, every block is a course. So if, you have, if you're a teacher or a student, you can use this file to find all the materials that are used in the course. Because um, every course is interactive. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, over here, on the, on the top of 1.4, you can see descriptive and inferential statistics. It's a course taught um, on the Bachelor Program of Communication. And when clicking this button, it leads you to this page um, where we have stored and linked to all literature, to all the videos, the assignments after PowerPoints of the course. So for example, clicking on the literature button will lead you to our reading list management system where the teacher, together with us, have created a list of the important reading materials of that course that can be open or closed reading, uh, uh, reading list materials. Clicking on the videos button will lead you to a, a video playlist where you can find all of the videos created by the teachers uh, so that they can use those videos in their course or share the videos with their colleagues of the same course. Or, of course, openly share those, those videos. Clicking the assignments would lead you to a place called A Sources, where we save, structure, and share our learning materials, and where everybody can, can use them. Um, and the PowerPoints can be stored on the same place. You can also see some subjects. Those are clickable as well. So if you're really interested in Chromebacks Alpha, you can click Chromebacks Alpha, and it would lead you to the video or reading, uh, reading materials of Chromebacks Alpha. So by saving, structuring, sharing the learning materials on specific platforms and tools, we combine them into le interactive learning paths that teachers and students can use for their own benefits. 
For example, if you're a student, for example, a pre-master student who has a, 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 who's lagging behind on a certain course or a certain subject, the student can look into the learning path and go, for example, to the specific course or subject he doesn't know so much of. So they can keep up. And as a teacher, you can always find the, lear the specific learning materials you and your colleagues created. So we're combining into something easy. And this is all done from a librarian's perspective of safe structure and sharing the materials. And what's in it for us as a, li as a librarian? There's something for us in it as well. By creating these, these learning paths with uh, the reading list manager, we can save costs because now uh, there are no more um, copyright infringements. Um, but also we get insight in the actual use of the, of, the, of, the, of the literature. And by using and linking to the platform Aetis source, we, we want to inspire teachers to look for new materials. So, this was a very short presentation, but I, but I really am really interested in new ideas on how to take away uh, the what's in it for me question that so many teachers have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sure. Is there anyone with a question? Yes. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I was just wondering because uh, it seems like it would cost you a, a lot of time uh, to invest in, in uh, collecting all the materials, which is, I think, a really great service for um, teachers. But are you at the same time uh, trying to get them to do that, this themselves in the future, or are you going to keep on supporting them all the time? No, for now on, we are supporting the teachers. Uh, and in the future, uh, we could consider, for example, student assistance to help us to save structure and share the materials. Well, thank you very much for creating this repository and uh, really like rich um, open educational resources which go behind of the text base but also as video or like other elements of it. I'm actually a bit interested in the learning path which is something a bit more difficult to describe because actually, you know, you can say, okay, we have information transmission, then we have assessment, then we have sort of whatever, then we go to the next topic but it is actually not the way I see learning as being efficient and being effective. So. Nowadays you have not a linear learning path, but you have some parallel, some recursive, some, and how you manage with all these pedagogical concepts which go behind of this like sort of having information, uh, delivering information, assessing, then what happens? How you deal with all that pedagogical, uh, like open pedagogies where the path is not like so clearly and individual maybe or differently or, yeah. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, at the moment, we are also starting a program um, with another uh, uh, bachelor program uh, from health medicine, uh, and they have a lot of courses that are taught in multiple programs. So therefore, we like to focus more on concepts. So instead of following a certain learning path like this, we could focus more on concepts and use the concepts as key indicators. Thanks very much for a really interesting presentation. I've got a quick question. To what extent did you work with open access or open science colleagues in the library to help develop any of this, or, or did you? So uh, at the university, we have a small open science and small open education resources team. Uh, so I'm creating this together with my colleagues and together with, with teachers from the bachelor program, because they are the content specialists, and I can save structure and share. Yeah, you can do it both ways around actually. So for the, for this course, uh, we focused on a course. So for example, like I said, descriptive and inferential statistics. Yeah. But you could also like focus on the subjects. So, like I said here, uh, you can click one of the subjects 
and it could also lead you to the place where you want to go. For example, the relevant literature, the relevant videos, relevant assignments. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's basically just a link. Hello, thank you very much for your presentation. Very interesting. I have a quick question. I'm not sure if you mentioned this before. How do you deal with different versions of uh, materials? Because sometimes teachers change uh, their materials when they uh, finish the course or if they are doing some materials collaboratively with other teachers or even with the students. How do you deal, deal with these different versions? So uh, as, uh, the, our main starting point is to create together with the bachelor program something like this so all the teachers are involved. When, for example, the literature changes, uh, we can really easily update for example, a specific course by updating the reading list manager, for example, or uh, adding a new playlist in our video management system and also changing a link. And because we created it in Excel, it's just really one click of updating the, the hyperlink. Yeah, you could also build one in parallel, yes, yes. Um, thank you for your presentation, and I think it's really relevant to, to look for those tools now because we are facing a huge amount of resources. Um, and I was wondering if, would, if it would be possible with this kind of uh, tools to have a more sophisticated um, sorting engine or filters to be able to have like tags uh, for for example we have uh, for a book it could be many tags like sociology psychology uh, um, a specific uh, topic and authors and could be linked to a not to a video maybe maybe there is a, a movie linked to the book could could be could be interesting to have as well for one topic uh, books, literature, video, uh, PowerPoint, uh, related to those links, and I, I, I don't know if it's just um, uh, this kind of filter are like fixed, or is it possible to have like more uh, advanced? Uh um, good, excellent question. Uh, I haven't thought of it from your perspective. Um, how to do that, I don't know, but I think uh, there are some, some programs in, in Excel you, you can create a lot of things of. I think you can add those kind of information as well. Um, and we also just started looking to in, into a program where you can, for example, focus on learning outcomes, uh, so, which is much more sophisticated, and perhaps with that system you can also do those kinds of things. Hi, Shores. Uh, thanks for your presentation. I'm Michel from SURF. Um, do I understand it clear that this is more the uh, management side, the teacher side? And what do the students see? Do they see this in their digital learning environment or do they only see the PDF which is made of the Excel? Uh, you can use it in 
actually both ways, I think. Um, of course, you can use it as a teacher and share it with your colleagues, uh, but it could also be very useful for students to look back into, for example, the first year to uh, take a look again at the literature you were given in your first year. So, and yes, you could share it, for example, in Canvas or, yeah. And then you share the PDF, or what do you share? This screen? Yeah, you could, you could share the, the PDF. And in this, this, you can basically create a PDF with uh, multiple pages, but this is the main page. And clicking on the course would lead you to the, to the, to the right page. So you only have one document that entitles everything you need. We have time for one more question, and there's already a volunteer, so that's good. Yes, thank you. So I'm, I'm, I'm Wilma. I'm actually also working at the Freie Universiteit, but in a different unit, not the library, but at the Student and Education Affairs unit. And I think that if you make sure that everything you have there as a source has a persistent identifier, you could put that in a knowledge graph. And then you can either put the creator as a source, or you can put the source as the source, you can, and you can all make all so sorts of representations, I think. So the key is to have persistent identifiers, also for educational resource, because I think we don't do that all the time. It's not a question, it was a remark, that's, sorry. <laughs> that's what every librarian wants to hear. <laughs> so um, I think that's all, we, all the time we have for questions. So I want to thank Shors again and thank all of our speakers once more and everyone for all the uh, questions. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day.